album qualifiers, and I want to talk about the new St. Vincent album, Mass Seduction. But before I do, I want to explain a little bit about why this video is so late, and in doing so, explain a little bit about how I go about doing these reviews. And yeah, part of the reason this was late is because due to a combination of my computer running out of storage space and me being stupid, I filmed about half of the review and then deleted most of it. So I had to reshoot a bunch of what I had already done. But another larger reason for me not reviewing this album a week or two weeks after it dropped, despite the fact that I was listening to it almost all the time, was that I really wanted to see how my opinion of it would grow and change. I spent a lot of time before these reviews trying to figure out what the album's intentions are, what the artist is trying to do, Albums end up growing on me quite often once I figure out what the tone the artist is going for and what the themes of the album actually are, and I can appreciate it more as something cohesive rather than just a hodgepodge of different things, some of it which are well executed, some of which aren't well executed. But what happens just as often, which is a little bit more of a bummer, is that sometimes the more clear the goals and the intentions of an album become, the less you like an album. Because all of the pieces can be well done and polished and beautiful, but if they don't effectively serve the album as a whole, then there's really no way to give it a good review. And that's what happened, unfortunately, for me with this new St. Vincent record. A lot of other records grew on me this year, and this one shrunk on me. The more I listened to it, the less I liked it. I've been spending a lot of time wondering why this album essentially feels like less than the sum of its parts, and I think a lot of it has to do with genre confusion. St. Vincent marketed this album as her most accessible and her most pop-friendly record to date, and my guess about why St. Vincent decided to go in this direction is that she may have been trying to exchange the stuff that made her records so textured and vibrant and bright and weird. Stuff like the really virtuosic guitar playing, the extended solos, the experimental song structures which could make a song go on for five or six minutes, and the strange, surreal, abstract lyrics for something that would be more accessible, more relatable, more intimate. And that was one of my only problems with her last two records, was that her instrumental palette was either really lush and polished, or really experimental and modern and kind of space age, which I liked both of those tones, but they lacked a lot of simple or familiar sounding elements to them, so that when St. Vincent was trying to make a song very relatable and emotionally resonant, sometimes it didn't really work and came off a little bit cold. So I was hoping that by adopting some sweeter and simpler and more melodic pop-friendly tones, that this album could solve that problem and create something a little bit warmer and more human. Going into this album, that was kind of what I was expecting to get. I was expecting and hoping that this record would feel more emotionally immediate, but might lose a little bit of the texture and color that kept earlier St. Vincent projects so compelling even when they did seem a little bit emotionally cold. But what we actually got here, I think, is an album that employs a lot of pop tropes while missing what actually makes pop music so compelling. Now in my mind, there have always been two things that seem really necessary for a good pop song. The first one being tight, catchy writing that emphasizes hooks, especially on the chorus. And the second thing being instrumentation that can support and emphasize those catchy, hooky parts of the song. In this new St. Vincent album, the writing is kinda loose, kinda formless, and doesn't provide that many good, well-written hooks, well-written refrains. The writing here is either really bare-bones and St. Vincent just gives us a few verses in the chorus, 
or it's kind of like a collage of different songwriting ideas, different refrains and snippets of melody, which don't really build on each other very effectively. And the instrumentation here is almost a little bit too subtle for the type of genre, the type of poppiness that St. Vincent is going for. It skews maybe a little too dramatic and intense and lush in a way that is beautiful, but doesn't really make these songs any catchier or hookier. This kind of symphonic instrumentation, it needs good writing and it needs complicated writing to back it up. I think one place where the problems with the songwriting really became clear to me on this album was in the outros, which a lot of the longer songs have, particularly the singles. I'm thinking especially of the songs Pills and Los Ageless. And both of these songs, like most of the songs on this album, sound good. They sound urgent. They have propulsive, compelling instrumentation that's dramatic, that's well arranged. But every time the energy of the song started lagging and the groove kind of slowly cut out and was replaced by this more relaxed, more laconic instrumentation, a lot of violins, a lot of really heavily reverb guitars, I felt my interest waning because the structure of the song, the thing that had kept it together and coherent was now gone and there was no good songwriting to replace it. I feel the same way about the songs at the end of this album. Smoking section is okay, but both slow disco and dancing with a ghost are these lush, beautiful violin driven ballads that I forget almost as soon as I listen to them because there's just not a lot of structure here. These songs don't really develop as much as they do switch between different refrains. And because this song doesn't really build on itself and doesn't have any kind of colorful or urgent sounding or interesting instrumentation, it just sort of leaves my mind as soon as I'm done listening to it. It's honestly a little boring. I don't want to be too hard on this album because at least in one respect it did pleasantly surprise me. I worried that a lot of the color would be leached out of this album because it relies so heavily on synths and the guitar is normally what gives a St. Vincent album so much of its visceral power. Even though I think that instrumentals that were maybe a little bit less intense and orchestral and a little bit more melodic and hooky would have worked better with these compositions, I still think that a lot of these instrumentals have enough urgency, enough weird, compelling grooviness to them that they hold up and really make a lot of the songs here feel more coherent, more fully realized, and less like underwritten snippets, which from a writing point of view, from a composition point of view, a lot of them are. Like I love the very off-kilter instrumentation on the song Savior. It's really funky, even a little bit jazzy. It has this really sleek, really slinky guitar melody, and on the off beats, this very cacophonous and strange sounding synth. So I really like the adrenaline rush of the instrumental on Sugar Boy, which is all of these popping, bouncing synths piled on top of each other to make a really propulsive groove that sounds a little bit like the soundtrack to a video game. And the sweetness of this instrumental also really matches the theme of the song, which has to do with that rush of connection that a fan feels when confronted with a musician and a musician might feel when confronted with a fan. It's not something that's very long lasting or very substantial, but it is incredibly powerful. I like the topic of this song a lot and I only wish it was fleshed out more. There's also a couple of times on the album when St. Vincent does what she has failed to do on so many songs and creates a perfect, infectious, accessible, hook-driven, groovy pop song, which is just like a little rush of happiness. Like the song Pills, which has a chorus so infectious that I couldn't get it out of my head for days. Uh, I also love the song Los Ageless. It took a while to grow on me, but the thunderous clashing instrumental in the chorus uh, that has these rushes of guitar chords sounds like driving off a cliff. It just kind of has that chaotic, intense power to it. Another song I really love here is the song Happy Birthday Johnny, which has the tightest, 
sweetest melody on this whole album and it's so well written it only really needs a piano to back it up and to emphasize and put in stark relief how beautiful this melody in the song really is. I mean this melody just it feels timeless. It feels like something pure that a monk could have come up with 500 years ago and it just catches and sticks in your head so well. And this melody complements and adds to the poignancy of the story being told here. It makes this story feel sad but also kind of inevitable and timeless. It's about this family member who is maybe a brother or a cousin who's having trouble with homelessness, with drug problems, isn't doing very well, and about how the main character feels sorry for him. She feels terrible about what he's going through, but at the same time she is frustrated and angry that he keeps manipulating her to get what he wants and keeps getting angry at her and it's just sort of a meditation on their relationship and about how some people will always kind of get in these positions where they end up ruining their lives and there is very little you can do about it a lot of the time or you want to do something about it but you feel like they would just get themselves into this position again. It is a very true to life song and it's Something that doesn't really get sung about much. Characters who are troubled, yes, but are also kind of jerks to themselves and to the people around them and how hard it can be to take care of those people. This album has a lot to do with loneliness and people seeking quick fixes to loneliness, be that idolizing someone in their past and living in nostalgia like on the song New York, or idolizing people in the present and thinking that they will somehow understand or save them without doing the real work to establish an honest relationship. Like the connection between the musician and the fans in Sugar Boy, where the musician thinks that the fans somehow personally understand her because they relate to her music, and the fans think that they personally understand the musician and connect with her because they really enjoy her music, and uh, both are kind of feeding off this instant rush of connection when really they don't actually know each other as people. This is only really about the art. You also get songs like Savior, which is about Annie's partner dressing her up in various outfits, making believe that she is certain things, putting her in different roles, and assuming that she is going to be someone who can inhabit all of these roles for them and is going to be able to somehow save them. Annie says, you know, darling, I am not your savior. In some ways, these songs feel as fleeting and as ephemeral as some of the quick fixes that the characters try to pursue for their loneliness. They don't feel like fully developed stories, instead they just feel like windows into a certain point in time, into a certain emotion, and often it seems like you will never understand the full story or the full situation. And this is kind of a strange writing style, but I don't think it's a bad one. There are tracks here which I think would have worked better if the narrative was a little fu more fully formed, if we understood a little bit more about the relationship between the characters and the song. But there are other tracks where St. Vincent gives just enough information to make us curious and to disturb and off-put us a little bit. And if she gave any more detail or fleshed out the scenario any more, then it would lose that element of surprise. Like the song Young Lover, where the young lover of this person tries to commit suicide in the bathtub, and when she discovers her, her initial reaction is cynical and like, geez, again, you did this again and you get the sense that this happens often and she doesn't know what to do about it. But the song kind of ends there. There's no confrontation, there's no background on what this relationship actually is. It's just sort of an interesting and strange peek into a mind of a character at a certain point in time. There are definitely things that work about this album. But as a whole, it kind of falls into this weird nether region between pop and rock, between something that's supposed to be immediate, catchy, warm, and relatable, and something that's a little bit more technically complex, a little bit more interesting and strange. 
and it really doesn't make a satisfying pop album or make a satisfying experimental album. It falls somewhere in the middle and that's what makes this record so frustrating. I am feeling a decent six on this album. I think that I may have been harder on it than I intended to be just because it was such a disappointment for me in the context of St. Vincent's other albums, which despite my sort of relatively minor nitpick that they sometimes feel a little emotionless and cold, I have really loved and I still play often. So take that for what you will. I am currently shooting the review for Trial by Fire, so I should have that up very soon. I am pretty happy with that album, spoiler alert. And it's getting to the end of the year, so I'm also starting to put together my end of year lists. If you have any albums that are maybe a little bit more obscure that you don't think I've checked out that you think I would really like, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll consider them for the lists. I hope everybody has a good day and I will see you next time. Bye.